do you know what these majestic beasts are? They are the southern resident killer whales, J, K and L pods to be exact. These whales live off the west coast of North America. The whales are part of three pods, J, K and L. These pods are in trouble. In past years, their population have been on the decrease. Since 1960, the whale population of J, K and L pods has seen some of the lowest numbers in years, at 74 whales in total for all the pods as of 2020. There are many reasons for the whales' population decline, such as prey population decline, disturbance caused by vessels, and chemical pollution. The southern resident whale's main food source is Chinook salmon, with 79.5% of their diet. The other 20.5% of their diet consists of coho, 15%, sockeye, 2.5%, steelhead, 1.3%, herring, 0.8%, halibut 0.6 and chum 0.4. Chemical pollution is a big problem as well. The more common pollutants are PCB, polychlorinated biphenyls, a highly toxic industrial product, DDT, dichlorodephenyl trichloroethene, synthetic insecticide and flame retardants, PBDEs. Orcas have been reported to have some of the highest levels of PCB for animals. These pollutants can cause pregnancy failures in orcas and can affect their immune system. Pollutants can also accumulate in the whale's blubber and over time those pollutants can be released into the orca. Vessel noise can interfere with their ability to find food and communicate with each other. Orcas may avoid noise from vessels, which can cause them to expend more valuable energy by going around the vessels or swimming faster to get away from them. The orcas also find less food when vessels are present. If the Trans Mountain Pipeline goes ahead as it is now, it will greatly increase vessel traffic in the Barad Inlet. The noise from the Morgan Tanker traffic would increase the risk of extinction of the orcas and with the pipeline, there would be an increased chance of an oil spill. If there is an oil spill, the orca's main food source, Chinook salmon, could be lost in that area. Even 25 years after the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Prince William Sound, the killer whale populations are still recovering. Orcas are also very important to the ecosystem and indigenous cultures. Orcas are the top predator in most marine ecosystems. Orcas can impact their prey population, such as salmon and coho. This can really only apply if they can find their prey in the first place. An orca can eat up to 10 salmon a day, depending on the size of the salmon and the whale. Orcas are the host to some types of endopodites and ectoparasites, such as Siamus orsini and Trematodes fasciola and nematodes. Orcas are very important in Aboriginal cultures in BC. They are a symbol of power that inspires humans to live well, strong, and to care for each other. Some even say that the orca is the guardian of the seas. Orcas are represented in lots of Aboriginal artworks as an intelligent creature who commands respect from other ocean-bound creatures. Some Aboriginal people's legends say that drowned souls at sea in the deepest water turn into orcas. For the Aboriginal people, this legend shows the longevity of the orcas and the resilience shared with the people in the face of hardship. One of the cherished creeds of the Aboriginal people is to live in tandem with the gift of the land. The orcas represent the creed that is the most important for the Aboriginal people. Orcas families work similar to our family structure by caring for their offspring individually, nurturing them through childhood, adolescence and into maturity. Orcas care deeply for their family, and when an orca in a family pod dies, the whole pod will mourn them. I found this story from Orca's Spirit Adventure. A few years ago, a young male named Luna, a member in L pod, left the group and swam into Nootka Sound for unknown reasons at the time. It turned out that an Aboriginal chief in the area had recently died. The story goes that it was told he would come back as an orca whale. 
After Luna left, he lived the rest of his days in Nootka Sound. No whale has ever left one of the BC area pods before or since. A few years after that, Luna did in fact meet up with his family and his new sister briefly, but remarkably, he chose to remain in Nootka Sound, where he still swims today, alone. This story shows us the bond between the orcas and the Aboriginal people of BC. What are we doing to help the orcas in JK and L pods? There are many groups and agencies working to address the threats of the JK and L pods by focusing their efforts on the whale's food sources, such as the Chinook salmon. In the USA, in May of 2019, the Washington state governor signed five orca recovery bills and laws with an aim to decrease vessel noise, educate boaters about whale watching in a safe manner for the whales, more safety around oil spills, Chinook salmon population and decreasing toxic pollutants. The Washington state governor has budgeted 1.1 billion US dollars for the laws and efforts of the five orcas recovery bills passed in May 2019. In 2018, in Canada, the government of Canada introduced a five-year, 167.4 million Canadian dollar initiative to help save the orca whales. Funds from this initiative are used to improve the orca's food availability, to reduce vessel disturbance and many other problems. The money was given to whale-related laws and bills and to organisations that focus on helping the orca whales. In October 2018, another 61.5 million Canadian dollars was put forward by Fisheries and Oceans Canada for additional measures to protect and support the recovery of southern resident killer whales. The US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, are working with Oceans Canada and other fisheries to create a report on the effects of salmon fisheries on the southern resident killer whales. They are also investigating the effects of inbreeding, winter, and the whales being outside of the Salish Seas. In 2018, the Washington state governor made the Southern Resident Orca Task Force to make recommendations for killer whale recovery. And in 2018, the Canadian government formed several working groups focused on the threats to the Southern Resident Killer Whales, comprised of technical and scientific experts from the federal government, indigenous groups, environmental groups, and industrial groups. There are many other smaller organisations working towards helping the southern resident killer whales, such as WWF, or a good way to get youth involved is with www.gifts.org, where you can get an orca adoption kit. It is said there is a bond cherished by both humans and orcas when both live in harmony with each other and the land. Then why are we not living in harmony with them? We are working towards helping them, but there is only so much the groups working to help the orcas can do. What are you doing to help?